Today is July the 26th, 2017, and what I have tonight, it may be an interesting project in some ways, hopefully you guys will enjoy it a little bit, is uh, I've got a Macintosh MX113 that I've had for a lot of years, but a few years ago, the last two or three years at least, uh, the volume control has gone really wacky on me, one channel, and I'll try to show you. I'm not going to hook it up to... Uh, to get a good picture of the front of it. Really, in, it's in very nice shape. I don't know if you guys enjoy looking inside the innards of these things, but I'm, I think you do. I know I do. I always like to see what the equipment looks like inside. Uh, looks like I got some glare and stuff on there, but the uh, the front of it's in a very nice shape. Yeah, so you get some of the glare off. So it didn't look like I got streaks on it. Uh, but the volume control is bad. What it does is when it's down low, uh, you don't get any output out of one channel, virtually nothing. And you turn it up and turn it up. One channel is getting louder and louder like it's supposed to. The other is doing nothing, nothing. And about half volume, boom, they both come in. And they seem pretty equal, but our ears are not a really good judge of that. And then, uh, you know, from halfway all the way up, that seems to kind of work. But I have, uh, I've seen this kind of problem before. In other amplifiers and preamps, I actually have a C26 that I bought back in 1976 that ended up with this very same problem. And it was only after two or three years. Uh, I know why, I don't know if I can, I'm not much of an artist, so I don't know if I can exactly draw it. But what ends up happening ultimately is, is that run, uh, the, the, the white, the, the, the carbon strip opens and uh, it doesn't work. These types of pots, even though they're pretty high quality, uh, they're not like the Allen Bradley that are a, a solid uh, block of carbon in the last 10,000 years. These guys, the, the, the pots, the ones that I'm familiar with, so here's a brand new one from Mac. It cost me, a, I don't want to even tell you how much it cost. <laughs> now I'll tell you, it's $100. It's made in Canada. Looks like a pretty good pot. Oops, there it is. Get it in the view of the camera. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be okay. It looks uh, it looks pretty good quality. It looks all nice and sealed up. Let's hope so at that price, huh? Well, these things are a bit of a challenge. Oh, yeah, before I talk about the challenge it is to get these apart. And what you want to do, and, and I'll emphasize this again, is when you get them apart, you want to be very, very careful with the backside of this glass. Because this black paint, after 40-something years or so, will fleek off very, very easy if you touch it. So you do not want to touch the backs of these panels or you'll end up with a with a pretty ugly looking uh, device. Yeah, and there's not much you can do about it. I have worked on it before and had the black fleek off in places. And um, I have used uh, black paint and dabbed over the little dots and covered them up and actually made it look really good again. But if you mess up the green... Well, you're just going to have a problem. You're going to have to live with it the rest of your life. Let, let me show you what this thing does. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the volume all the way up here. I think you're being able to see. Yes. I'm turning turn the volume all the way up on one channel, and then I'll start back down and, and show you what the output is. Then we'll switch channels. I'll turn it all the way back up, and I'll start back down again. So let's... Right now, I've got it plugged into top one which is the left channel I think that's the good one and I'll show you what it does here let's just look uh, at something real simple something real easy to, to, to look at I'm trying to use my tripod because I know your gentlemen uh, tell me that uh, you know I need to be a little bit more steady and, and I agree so let's see what we can do here bear with me while I uh, crank this darn thing up so you'll actually get a, a good picture of it. Yeah, what, what we're actually, the only thing we're really going to look at is this voltage level right here. Okay, all set. I've got a kilohertz going into it from the oscillator. You know, nothing big deal and fancy. Okay, I turn it all the way up. And I'm driving it at about a minus 10 dBm, maybe minus 20, I don't know. I'll, I'll show you those those things in just a minute. So I got 5.6 volts coming out of there and I, that's all the way up and I turn it back to like 3 o'clock drops to 1.6 12 o'clock about 0.4 uh, that 
would be like 10 o'clock, 0.03, uh, 9 o'clock, now it's going down to millivolts, 2.4 millivolts, and there's off, 0.13 millivolts or so. Now let's go to the other channel. Okay, all the way back up. Okay, first of all, see we got more voltage there. And I know why. It's because the pot is open. That's what I'm convinced that I know it is. And I'm, I'm really pretty sure. So it's not loading that channel properly. So I got more voltage. And then I go back to the same place to like uh, 3 o'clock. Drops to 1 and a half. 12 o'clock. 0.7. And when I go lower than that, say they uh, 10 o'clock. See, it's gone down to the millivolt level already. Okay, let's just compare two. Let's set it there. It's it set it to 10 o'clock. There's the bad channel, 25 millivolts. And the good channel is... Well, that'd be a... I don't know, it's Oh, darn. I'm going to plug this right here. Okay, sorry. Okay, see, we got... Uh, 0.034, that'd be 30, 34.6 millivolts, nice and steady. But we go back to the bad channel, instead of 34.6, we got 25 millivolts. And if we go a little lower, say to 9 o'clock, we got 27 millivolts on the bad channel. We got 2.6 volts, 2.6 millivolts. All right, something, something, is, something is goofy here. I think it's the left channel is bad. Actually, I think this is the bad channel. Yeah. See, there. Yeah, that's where we'll. I'll, okay. Nine o'clock. We got. You, you can see. I don't want to go over there and kick the thing. But you can see that little red light on right there says millivolts. Okay. So that's uh, 2.1 millivolts on the left channel, 27 millivolts on the right channel. Okay, now let's go back and go to uh, like 10 o'clock, about 11 o'clock actually. Okay, well now we got 0 0.204 volts, that'd be 204 millivolts on the left channel. If we go to the right channel, we got 25 millivolts. Twenty-five millivolts on the yeah, see it on the right channel. I'm confusing myself. Well, okay, that's all the way off. And it, it, it should start coming up. Kind of smooth. Two millivolts, five millivolts, seventeen millivolts. And now we're up to forty-two millivolts. Seventy-nine, one hundred forty-five, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred fifty-four millivolts, six hundred millivolts. 700, 800, 2 volts. Okay, so it's, like it's almost all the way up. There it is, all the way up. That one actually seems to be working, doesn't it? Okay, that's the left channel. Now let's go to the right channel. I know one of the channels is broke. I'm never really paying attention which one it was. Okay, we start coming up. There, it finally jumped up to 27 millivolts. 26, it actually went back down as I'm turning it up. 25, it's going down as I'm turning it up. I'm turning it up slowly. See, nothing is happening there. That's exactly what it does. Nothing happens. I get nothing out of that channel. So that's actually the right channel. Okay, I'm all the way up to 11 o'clock. And then I come on up, 26 minutes, bang, there I go. Now I got some, now I got some volume. See, now I got 676 millivolts and I'm up. I'll, just almost exactly at uh, 12 o'clock, 9.9, .9. 
doesn't do much in there either. All, you know, there, there are just ranges where nothing really seems to be happening. And then all the way up, we got that six volts again. Okay, so it's actually the right channel. Sorry I have to fumble so much, but you know, it's easy to get confused sometimes. So a right channel is one that's bad. Anywho, let me, uh, I'll, I'll stop it. I'll do some, uh, some uh, disassembly here. Let's crank this thing back down. Sorry for the, all the vibration there. Let's, uh, let's get back out to, to normal and uh, get back down to earth here. Yeah, the first thing you got to do is turn it off, pull all these knobs off. These come off pretty easy. They, they just, they're just pressed on there, but they're pressed on there nicely. They got a little black, uh, uh, little black washers underneath them. I don't want to lose all that stuff. I'm, I try to keep my stuff as uh, nice and original as possible. Uh, if you do lose these things, by the way, you can, uh, you can find almost exactly the same thing or something that works absolutely just as good uh, uh, in, in, in the guitar world where they have these little uh, little felts like that. Okay, well anyway, let me get down to something that's kind of interesting because I know that it's a bit of a challenge to, to, to get this uh, panel off and, and be very careful with it and then I'll be right back. Okay, a little bit of update. Here's what I'm wanting to replace is this guy right here. And you see I'm going to have to take the front panel off, which I'm not looking forward to, but it's got to happen to be able to get at the, at the nut. And here's the one that goes back in there. Looks like it's going to, going to fit it nicely. I have to unsolder this stuff and make some very careful notes of that. I use my uh, cell phone to make pictures of this kind of stuff which has bailed me out more than once. So that is the next challenge. Now we gotta I gotta get this piece off without damaging it. Just uh, if you like to look at uh, how these things are built. They're actually quite nice. I got no issues with them. This one's all original, still got all of the same uh, electrolytic capacitors in it and, and what have you. Uh, so just for the fun of looking at the innards of it. There you go. Okay, looks like that was a little easier than I thought. I don't know about the rest of this thing, but here's what I want to replace over here. So we'll see. As you can see, the back of it's pretty intricate how they um, how they mask things off and everything. Like I say, you just don't want to you don't want to get in there and try wiping that because if that paint comes off, your the front of it will just be ugly. It's a real chore to fix whatever you, anything that you might be able to fix. You know, I don't know if these lights uh, actually come on anymore. I think I'm going to plug it in and and see if they do. I guess they do. Yeah, they do. Look, they still light up. Those things are still good, and they see they have a little mask on them too. Oh, I'll show you something. Before I lose it. This is out of another uh, tuner I have right here. See this little thing right here? See how it's uh, it's red but and it's burnt black? It actually if you it, it actually slides down inside this thing right here. That's what makes that red. This come this is out of a different one that I have. This is out of an MX112 and it works perfectly and what I have found out is that you can slide these things up and down to different positions like when you have it like if it's in there like that you know you're not going to see a red light see it's black it goes out you think the bulb burned out and actually the bulb's working fine and you can pull it up to right right there and it'll look perfectly uh, red and new again unfortunately when I was working on the other one I broke the bulb so uh, it's uh, it's completely out. But anyway, that's what that little thing is right there. I made a video some time ago about that because uh, others have said, you know, it's out. But the bulb, if you look down in there, you'll be able to see it burning. Yeah, you can see this one burning down in there. Okay, well anyway, got to get it upside down now that I got the front panel off, which really wasn't too bad. There were a 
couple of screws down at the bottom and a couple at the top and some on the side and whatever. A lot of screws, but it did come apart uh, fairly easy. Let's hope the rest of it goes easy. Okay, some challenges already. I thought I would just move them over one at a time. But you see the way that these connections are made, this one is over on the side. This one is down at the bottom. This one's it's not at the same angle and actually this locking tab, which is right here, on this one, this is a different size pot and uh, it doesn't fit the this fits the hole okay but this locking tab does not go into the, uh, the hole right here so this is not going to be the easiest thing in the world but I think it is doable I think what I'm going to do is uh, take these two off first and solder on here and put some insulation on so I've bent them up a little you know at an angle so they won't touch. I think that's going to be okay. But uh, this is not going to be the easiest one in the world. Hopefully not the hardest one either. Okay, well, looks like it's time to put it back together. Uh, but one thing that if there's anything to be learned from this that is unique you would want to know if you replace this. This is a complete accident, almost. Well, not almost, but it is. Uh, when I pulled one of the knobs off, right here, the center came out of it, which I said, oh well, that's not too bad. Well, fortunately, it's one with the, with the mark on it, and the fact that this thing came out I said, oh well, that's not a big deal. I glue it back in. Well, in this case, it, it is a blessing. This is a complete accident. I didn't plan on this in any way. But the point being is if you put uh, a knob back on it, like this one, with the, with the, you know, the center intact, um, the, um, let me show you. See, look where it's going to point. You know, it should be pointing over here for off. It should be pointing like right there. You can see that mark. It should go on like that. You know, when it's all back together, that would be the off mark. And then as you turn it, of course, it turns clockwise. Well, by the complete coincidence that this one came apart, that means I can put this on here and. Well, however it's going to go, yeah, like that. And then I'll have to put some glue, of course, and then I can, I don't want to press it on there because it might get stuck. I can set this wherever I want and press it down on there, and I'll have the offset at the right place. <laughs> that is that is luck beyond my uh, usual luck, and I never expected that, but it's going to work. So the, uh, the, the, the point is, is this, um, let's see, see, this one is off. There you go. I mean, you can see it right here. There you go. This one's off. Darn, that thing is hard. Okay, it's off. And see, this one has got the flat spot up. This one is off. And see the, where the flat spot is on it? It would be... It would be facing pretty much straight up. Well, I guess that's just uh, what we have to anticipate when uh, we, we put replacement parts in, uh, in these whole beasts. Well, let's get it back together. Get it straightened out, and I'll uh, I'll go over how I'm going to line that thing up. We'll see how this thing works. Okay. Well, to align this guy, it actually turns out very good. Let's put some light on it so we can maybe see it. Just see if the camera will I'll line it up a little bit better with the camera. Yeah. So what I'm going to do here is just use a little bit of contact cement, and it lines up beautifully not too much don't want to get carried away but I'm going to put um, oops, like a mess David put a little bit of um, a little bit right there 
and uh, it seems like actually when I slide it on there, it um, it's okay. And uh, get my fat head down here in a way. Line that thing up right there with, with off, and it goes in there perfectly. And actually, even kind of mechanically fit some slots in there, and well, liar, liar. No, they did a while ago. I guess I'm going to have to let it dry now. Let it stay right there until it dries. Okay. Well, fortunately, that, that seems to be what you'll have to do if you replace one of these things. Let's uh, scope back out on this thing. Is you will uh, have to pull the, the center part out of the knob to get it to line up again. But this one is bad, and I'm pretty sure... Let's see if we can, while that thing's dry, let's see if we can figure out what's wrong with this thing. Let's move this guy over here. And let's just look at the meter. I'll bet you that one of them is open. That's my guess. Okay, 750K, so I'm going to set it on like 10K. And uh, just measure across it. You know, from, from one side to the other. I haven't done this yet, so I don't know how it's going to turn out. Let's see. Yeah, look at there, it is open. It's completely open. That's on the 100K scale. And uh, there it is. Wow. Well, the reason I know this is because I've seen this before. Uh, I'll, I think I can draw you a picture of how these things work if you're interested and what happens to them. Let me see if I can get this thing down here on this sheet of paper real quick. Now I'll show you what I, I'm pretty sure happens to them is uh, the way that the, the pot is built inside is, is it's got um, it, is it's like this. This is one terminal, this is one terminal. And of course it's kind of thick. It's like this. I know I'm a terrible artist. And then it has another little ring right here that comes out to the center terminal. So these are the end terminal. This is the center. Well, in these pots, th this part right here is plastic. In these lesser expensive pots, the Allen Bradley, this is, this is a piece of carbon. But in the lesser uh, expensive ones, like the ones that I just paid for, which wasn't too less expensive, of course, at a hundred bucks, they, they apparently just coat this. I guess they spray on a, uh, a coating of carbon, and these pots, of course, are logarithmic in, instead of linear. And then uh, the, the knob goes down into it like this, and when it turns, it has a, it has a little foot that, that scrapes around, you know. It runs around here and then it's got the center one right here it's got another little it's got another little scraper that runs around this part so you got a mechanical connection running around here and, and it's in sync so to speak with, with the one running around here it is, is this one runs around here then this one of course is in the same spot well I guess this stuff just wears off and it gets an, it gets an open spot in it and this one had an open spot apparently somewhere around there because as you try to turn off the volume, you've got nothing and nothing and nothing. This end right here would be grounded. The uh, signal would come in right here. And this would be going out to uh, the next stage uh, as, the, as the volume control. So as you can see, it's when you got it turned completely to the left, completely counterclockwise, then this little center point all the way down here is, uh, is at ground. And when it's all the way up, then the, the signal is just coming in and, and going straight over here because because of the way the, the little wipers are on it. But apparently it's open about right here because I get no volume, no volume, no volume, boom, and then I get a lot of volume. But that means that this end is not grounded either, so I'm not actually getting attenuation. Completely makes sense. Well, that's what it is. So I've taken these things apart before thinking that I could fix them, thinking that they were just dirty. It doesn't work. They're not just dirty. They're uh, they're open, and you can't fix them. The only thing, the only place you can put this is the garbage can, and that's where it's going to go. 
and there's where it stay. Anyway, I hope this helps. If you uh, get into one of these, uh, if you get into a repair of one of these things, the uh, just about as far as I know, all of the old Mac amps, uh, preamps, and what have you of this era, you know, the 1970s, 80s era, they still work beautifully. Uh, but if you have to replace the volume, uh, know what you're getting into and know you'll have to adjust that, that, that centerpiece to, um, to make the dial marking correct. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps. Well, as usual, I forget something. I can't believe I forgot to show you the output. But I'll show you how it works here. It's all hooked back up. The preamp, uh, this is the uh, amp it plays into. Hi. I forget something every time. Well, see, here's what it used to wouldn't do. It's low levels. One channel, left channel. It wouldn't do that. I would get, I would get nothing on one channel. I get that on one channel, and that on the other channel, because because that because that pot was open. But now it's it's perfect. Anyway, that's it. Yeah, I'm real pleased with it. I didn't damage any of the. The black that I was talking about in there either so uh, so there you go sorry I forgot to show you the voltages but I'm I'm sure they're they're pretty pretty well equal thanks again